So in this video, I am going to show you how to create a drawing, which is the last step in this wheel assembly project. Uh, even though so much in our world is manufactured and manufactured in uh, sort of an automation process uh, where machines are doing the work, we still have humans running the machines and humans like to use drawings uh, to refer to. Uh, in construction, we definitely use drawings. In manufacturing, uh, we are still using drawings and I think that's not going to change for a long time. So I'm going to show you how to do that uh, here using Fusion, okay? Um, you're going to, I'm going to open the data panel, okay? Um, let's go ahead right now, I'm just going to have this this untitled, I'm going to hit save, and I'm going to call this drawing demo, and I'm going to save it in my folder, okay, and then instead of using a design, I'm going to go drawing from design, okay, and I'm going to do a new drawing, full assembly, I'm going to say a C-sized C sheet is a better size, we're going to hit OK. Okay, the design contains neither solid bodies nor sketches. Okay, so we need to um, we need to have our our um, assembly open. So I'm going to go back over to my data panel, and I'm going to open my wheel assembly complete by double clicking it. Okay, and now from here, let's try it again. Drawing from design. We want the full assembly. We want, again, a, a bigger sheet, a C-size sheet. Create new drawing. And now I'm going to try hitting OK and see if this will open it. Yes, it looks like it's opening. It's thinking. So open. make sure your final assembly is saved. Then make sure you open it. And then from that assembly, it's going to create a new drawing. OK, if you just start with a blank untitled and you save it, uh, it doesn't know what to bring in. So now you can see it already automatically brought in my wheel. So I'm going to start by bringing it over here and I'm going to just hit OK. Okay, then, and I can close this now, make some more room on my sheet. Then I'm going to want to do the, the additional drawings off of this main one. So I'm going to click it again with that blue square lit up. I'm going to right click on it and I'm going to say projected view. See, now I can get another side view if I move above it, I can get a top view. If I move below it, I get a bottom view. Another side view, if I go into the angles, I can get a nice isometric um, 3D view. Okay, This one doesn't show me much because it's just showing the bottom, but this one shows a lot. And I'm going to do a top view because that's better than a bottom view. So we'll do a top view. We'll do a 3D view right there. And then you can either click the green check mark or you can hit enter. Okay. So I've got them started. Um, I think they would be better over here on the sheet because we're going to fill this sheet with all of our parts. So I'm going to drag them. I'm going to highlight them all, and I'm going to drag them all over here. And if you wait a second, it kind of catches up to what you're doing. Um, these are just going to be for reference. I'm not going to dimension them, but I do need room underneath for titles. So I'm going to grab these two. I'm going to move them down. And if you notice, you can't move them sideways without moving the associated top view sideways. Okay, so they're always going to stay associated. So this is okay, but I want to get a little more space, like maybe that. That lets me put a title here and there, and then like a big overall title right there. So, so far so good. I'm just going to hit save because it's always important to save. Um, I guess I can just leave it just like that. It's always important to save often. So that way, if you crash out, you still have some of your work saved. Okay. Now I'm going to go into the text tool. And I'm going to just come down here and draw a text box. And I'm going to say, uh, I'm going to go caps lock. And I'm going to go wheel assembly. Check your spelling. Close. Okay, that looks really small. So I'm going to escape out so I'm not in that tool. Double click it, highlight it. You always have to highlight it first 
and then you can change the size up here and I'm going to make that maybe like a half inch and we'll see what it looks like. Looks pretty good. Maybe it's a little too big. So I'll do it again. Highlight it. Maybe I'll go like 0.4 inch. Close. Okay, and then if I drag this little arrow, I can make it all in one line of text, which looks way better. And then I can kind of center it underneath everything. Okay, that's good. Then we're going to put a, set, a title here that says Top View. So I'm going to just do another uh, text box. And I'm going to write Top View. Okay. Um, and I'm going to pick slightly bigger text because the last one was tiny. Okay, that looks pretty good. Point two. So I'm going to move that. And then if you, uh, if you want to save some time, you can just click it, Command C and Command B. And then what you have to do is say like starting point, end point. And I don't know if I can Command B again. No, see that didn't work. Um, so I'm going to have to pick it again, copy and paste, and then click and click. But it's still faster than having to redo all the settings. Um, enter. I wonder if I can command B now. I guess I can escape out and then I can command B again. Enter. And now all I have to do, instead of redoing all the size and writing everything out, I can just double click this and call this an isometric view. I can also stretch it from here. Call this a, like a side view. I can call this a maybe an end view. Okay, I'm going to zoom in a little bit. You want to be consistent with where you place everything. Okay, everything is centered and underneath. If you want to do everything centered on top, that's okay. If you want to do everything like centered on this, you know, like right here. Um, it's kind of random, but you know, as long as you're consistent, whoever's going to build this part is going to be able to find your information. But if you're like, some of your text is on top, some is on the side, some is on the bottom, it's going to be really hard to understand your drawing. So there's the first part. Everything is saved. Um, or everything is, is in here just for the assembled view. I'm going to do another base view now. So up here where it says drawings, if you click this one, it's a base view. Okay, it's going to bring in another base view because you can only use um, wheel assembly for this drawing. But I'm going to show you how I'm going to turn everything off so you can just see a part of the, the wheel. So I brought it in, I hit OK, I clicked it one more time, made the box blue, right click, projected view, and we'll do, uh, let's do the, um, like the, the base plate on this one. So I'm going to go check mark. And these are going to be purely like technical drawings. So I'm not going to do an isometric view. I'm just going to do top view, side view. Okay, if you notice here, now we have this wheel assembly, which is um, the first one we brought in. This is the second one we brought in. And, it, and if you don't have it expanded, you can expand it like this. And you can check mark or uncheck mark everything that you don't want to see. So if I check off everything but base plate, I'm left with just the base plate. Okay. This drawing is, this one drawing here is not really useful because there's more information on this drawing. And this one can show us the thickness. So I'm going to take this one and I'm going to delete it. And then I'm going to move this one so it's associated closely with that. Okay. And let's move those kind of more over here for now. Then I could take this guy, Command C, Command V, and put that over here. That way I match the same text size. Um, I'm going to pick one of these, and I'm going to Command C, Command V, and I'm going to put that over here. Enter. Command C, Command V, and I'm going to copy and paste it over to there. Then I can make this say 
side view. Close. I'm going to make this one say um, base plate. Close. Okay, I'm going to grab this and I'm going to just slide it over there. I'm going to move all of these a little bit further in on the page because we do need room for dimensions. Okay, the dimension tool is up here, but I don't like using the one with the sun on it because it, I'll show you, it just does bad things. If I want to dimension um, like this overall height, and I pick like this dot, and then I pick maybe that dot, then I get this weird dimension that's useless. Okay, so the better tool I find most of the time is linear dimension. With that one, I can pick this dot, I can pick that dot, or I can pick this dot, and it's always going to do what I want. Um, dimensions usually should not be inside your part. They should usually be outside of your part. And I'm going to leave a little bit of room, because then I can put more dimensions in here. Okay, so again, if I go dimension, linear dimension, I can dimension from here to there, and I can go up to there, and I have my overall height and width. Then I can do another dimension and get from here to there. See, and I left some room for that. So I have this one and a half inch dimension. Um, here's another tool that I find really handy. The chain dimension tool lets you just pick a dimension and then continue adding to that dimension. Okay, so it's really handy and then just hit, uh, like a, uh, escape didn't help me, escape just killed it chain dimension, pick this one, then you just go click, and click, and enter. But remember, you don't want a closed chain or a closed string of dimensions, so I'm going to delete this middle one out, and now that's looking good. Then we should dimension maybe whole locations in one place. I'm going to do this top corner for that, so I'll go dimension, linear, and I'm going to make sure it's the center point of the hole. And I'm going to go to there and come back out here. Then I'm going to, again, linear dimension from center point to there, and I'm going to go out to there. Okay, so now the hole is located. If you notice on the dimensions, you have diameter dimension. Okay, you could use that on your hole. You can also do a radius dimension to maybe define this radius right here. Okay, and then we could do a linear dimension to describe that. We could do a linear dimension to describe this. Okay. Um, this bottom part is not visible here. I wonder if I'm going to hit save just to make sure I've got it in case something bad happens. My radar kind of goes off. Anytime I try something else, uh, that's where sometimes computers crash. So uh, I like to save first. So I'm going to click this view here, and I'm going to right-click it on the blue box and see if I can change the, the view. Let's see. Does it give me anything I want here? I was What I was hoping is that I could make the, the view showing the hidden lines. And I know there's a place to find it, but now I can't remember where it is. Would it be in here? I don't think so. So I'm going to leave it this way for now in the interest of getting this video to not be too long. But I could put a dimension on that side view. Okay, so if I go uh, linear dimension, I could dimension from here to here. Um, I need to move this now because I got to make some more room for that dimension. And that's okay if they don't line up like this, or you could grab all of this and move all of that up. That would probably be more clear. You know, line up your, your text. Um, we don't know where this is, so we need a dimension from one of these corners so that you know where this little notch is. 
So I could do a chain dimension. I could pick this, and then I could just click it to there, and then hit Enter. That's a pretty, pretty well defined part. Okay. Um, if you uh, if you find, I think the the vertical. Let's just bring in one more part here. If you do the vertical uh, supports. You're going to find, I think, that you need to do three views. So if I, let's see, here we go. A little bit of lag there. This one, um, this one, check mark. Okay, and now this part, I want to turn everything off but the brace wheel support. And I'll show you what I mean. Some parts, you only need two views. This part, I don't know if you could build it with only two views. I think you might be able to build it with just those two views, but I would keep all three. I think it just makes it more clear. Okay, so you have to decide whether you need two or three views. I want you to fully dimension one part. I want you to at least do like overall dimensions on the rest of the parts. So like an overall height, overall width. Okay, put this in for clarity. Never dimension on a 3D view. I just think that's bad dimensioning. You usually dimension on these projected views. Okay. When you're done, you're going to do the output. So click on the output button. You can leave it on all sheets because we only have one sheet. Um, and you're going to say OK. And make sure you know where it goes. I'm going to save it to my desktop. Right there. And I'm going to go save. Waits for a moment, okay, and then if I minimize this, there's my drawing right here as a PDF. That's what gets submitted through Canvas. So if I open it, this is something you should like email your parents and make them cry. Okay, these technical drawings look so good when they're done. Um, this could be printed. It could be viewed on any computer, pretty much in the world. Okay. Um, but that's the, that's the end result. That's what gets submitted through Canvas.